It's a beautiful day with Roddy. Hey everyone, I really thought it would be wonderful to share some of the conversations that I've had during interviews. I really find that we go into so much depth and have um, such wonderful, meaningful conversations throughout them. And so I want to share this one with you to start off with. Um, this is going to be the first of many. So let me know whether you like these um, conversations and whether you'd like me to share more. But this one is purely based on jealousy. It's about how I used to find it so difficult when I used to see people being happy in what they were doing. Um, and I speak about how I came out of that and how I realized um, the reason, the deeper reason behind it. But also I talk about some of the other things that I've done in my life that have really helped build deep foundations for me and really helped support who I've now become in my growth um, and to really go through that journey. So um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's helpful. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I went through such a breakdown of really not knowing what I was good at. Like I had no idea what to do. I felt like I was seeing J60, which I was so excited about, but it then made me reflect on my skills. And I was like, what do I even have to give? And everything he was doing was giving back to so many people. And I was like, I need something in my life. And I want something in my life where I feel whatever skill I have, I'm able to recognize it and I'm able to give it to other people. And I really struggled with that so much because I felt like I was just mediocre at everything. And I felt like I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'm okay. I was either mediocre or really, really, really bad at it. And I was like, well, how do I you know, figure that out. And I went through a sad phase where I was like, you know, I'm just not good at anything. Um, and then I realized that everybody has something. Like, even if, even if you don't realize it, you have to do the work to try and figure out what that was. And so I always loved health and nutrition. I actually studied as a dietitian and nutritionist. Um, and then when I moved to New York, I actually just, everything that I've ended up doing has just been a very beautiful, magical, random interaction with someone that sparked something in me. So I met, um, an Ayurvedic practitioner and uh, Ayurvedic chef called Divya in New York. And I just was like, I am obsessed with this human. I need to just study her and I need to just be around her. So I just became her assistant in her cooking classes. Wow. And yeah. I was just like, I just want to learn from you and absorb you and like in any way possible. So let me just follow you around and shadow you. So that's what I did. I helped her in her um, cooking classes. And then I went on to do a yoga teacher training there. So I'm a yoga teacher technically, but um, I've wow. never practiced it. I, I didn't actually end up end up following through with it, but it was the most beautiful way that I felt I found myself. Through that yoga teacher training, I found out so much about me, so many unhealed things that I had to deal with. Mm. Um, and at the same time, it made me so much more confident in who I was. And, you know, I always used to, and I, I, at that point, it made me realize that, you know, I, I've had so many points in my life where I felt jealous of other people or envious of other people. And I realized that actually that had nothing to do with them in any way. It had nothing to do with even what they were doing. It was me seeing someone have that spark of purpose and and happiness and joy through what they were doing. And I was like, it's not that I want to be them. It's not that I want to have what they have. It's that I want to feel that joy in myself and that like that contentment in what in, in what I have to be able to give to other people. And I was like, wow, like that's actually such a beautiful feeling to know that, you know, jealousy actually for me comes or dis dissatisfaction comes when I don't understand who I am and I don't understand what I have to give to other people. And actually we all just want to give to other people. And the problem is if we don't know what we have to give, that's actually where the frustration for me came from. And I feel like that's probably for, for many people. Yes. Um, yeah. Powerful. And I don't know what the what the what the question was. No, no, you answered <laughs> it. And I, I think too, like to, to your point of like, oh, I did yoga teacher training, but I, I didn't end up teaching. But like, you use that practice. I use I'm sure same. every mm -hmm. day. Yes, yeah, so I've heard that so much with people with yoga teacher training. They're like, oh, they didn't use it or they did it, but it was just profoundly transformational for for them. It takes you through such a journey. Uh, what what is that like? Because you said there was unhealed parts of you that it helped heal. Yeah. So I um, a lot of it is to do with breath work. Like you do a lot of breath work practice in it. And actually, um, breath is so linked to your emotions. Mm -hmm. And actually, it says that we have so much stagnant energy that let's say you go through something traumatic in your life. You end up, and if you don't process it, whether it is... Um, a loss or a breakup or whatever it is, you end up holding that in physical form in your body. Like mm -hmm. energy is trapped in your, there, there's different channels in your body. There's physical channels like our digestive tract and, but then there are subtle energy channels in our body too. And it says that if we don't go through 
the healing process, then actually those things get trapped in different parts of us. And I, and actually we feel that pain physically, but we also feel it emotionally. And then that trickles in. In, in Sanskrit, the word is samskaras, it's called. And that basically is almost like footprints that are left on you from past experiences, past um, past anything that you've gone through leaves yeah. some scars. And if you don't end up working through them, they get deeper and deeper. Mm. And so it really just helped me see parts of me that I really had to work on and that were really dark and that I really needed to, and I had so much, um, I, I really had very low kind of- um, Self-worth maybe? Yeah, yeah, very low self-worth growing up. And I knew it was purely based on, I, I grew up quite overweight when I was younger and, um, made me realize that I had, yeah, I had so many doubts in myself from growing up. And, and I think the problem is sometimes when you have doubts about yourself physically, it ends up seeping into how you feel about so many parts of you. And I'm like, that's yeah. so sad. Like I grew up and I was like, that is so sad that I, that I wasted so much of my, and, and everything happens for a reason. But in hindsight, I'm just like, I feel like I wasted so much of my teenage life thinking that I just was not worthy. And that seeped purely through physical. And then that seeped into so many places in my life that I ended up at the age of 20, I don't know, three in New York, not ha having no clue about what I have to offer to people mm. because I had not appreciated anything about myself until that point. And I was like, wow, like we base it on, and obviously it's based on so many external things. And, 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 and yoga teacher training made me realize that actually all those external things, you know, even if I had a hundred people every single day telling me, how amazing I was, how beautiful I was, how incredible my mind is, whatever. And if I didn't feel it, and if I wasn't able to appreciate certain things about myself, it will not make any difference. And that was really liberating too, because it's like, actually, that's what it was. It was liberating to know that every single thing that I allow to affect me and every single thing I feel about myself is purely and solely me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all me. And I was like, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. And that helped me so much because I now am able to snap myself out of things so much faster. I'm able to recognize and spend time with myself enough. And that's another practice that yoga teacher training taught me, to sit with myself. Until I moved to New York, I would have... Every single person in my life tell me, and I'd invite it, I'd want people because I didn't know what I wanted myself. Mm -hmm. I'd constantly want my mom to tell me what I wanted to do, my sister to pick things for me from like my cutlery that I want to buy to like <laughs> the wallpaper. <laughs> like everything was made, was decisions that I would want everybody else to make for me because I was too lazy and I was unaware of the fact that I knew nothing about myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted everybody else to tell me it. And so yoga teacher training taught me so much, but those were some of the... It was the most incredible life-changing thing that I did, wow. for sure. So I really hope you found that useful. And I definitely want to share some of the things that I did on my journey to be able to understand what it was that I had within me, that I felt comfortable sharing, that I felt like was my offering to the world. So let me know if you'd like me to share that. Um, but also always remember that there's always something. And all you have to do is do the work to understand yourself, to get to know you better. You basically have to be in a relationship with yourself, at least for a little bit, to really, really understand exactly what it is that you love about yourself. And then you'll feel so much more comfortable sharing it with other people. And you'll really feel like you have value. And therefore, you feel like you have value in other people's lives too. So I hope that was useful. And um, sending you all so much love and gratitude. And remember, there's an another video coming out this Friday.